right. Good morning. Oh, hold on a second. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking time out in the middle of your day for us to redo this session. Um, we have Ms. Toya Wilson, um, who is going to be talking about transforming marketing with automation and intelligence. Um, for any of those who missed this session, um, I heard it was amazing. So I was one of those people. So I'm happy that we're getting to do this again. And then after this, um, if you weren't at Saturday's session, um, or at the last Vanguard session, um, please stay on for a few moments so I can talk to you about um, what we're going to do for graduation. And you can take it on over. Thank you. Happy Friday, everybody. Thank you for joining us for the replay, which is live. So I will first start by apologizing for our technical difficulties. Back in August, that sometimes happens when you're on the road and we were traveling during that time. So now I'm back at home. We shouldn't have any problems. So I'm excited to get started. Let's rock and roll. If you have any questions in the chat, please let me know. Feel free to stop me at any time. And we will be doing some activities as well throughout the session. So with that being said, let's jump right in. I'm going to kind of expedite the presentation through the slides because I want to make sure that we have time for all of your questions and for me to demonstrate some of the tools that I will be recommending today. So if you need to take a picture of a slide, if you need me to repeat anything, just let me know in the chat and I will certainly accommodate that request. If you don't remember, we covered a lot in and out choppiness um, in August. And so I want to give you a refresher of all the things that we're going to cover. I'm going to be using a story, a fictitious character that is built on myself and a couple of my clients. So we'll start with a small business owner's tale or story, and then we'll identify maybe some of the challenges with marketing that you all may be seeing in your own business. And then we will move into how AI can help you with some of those challenges, like content creation, like social media scheduling, customer service, email marketing. And then I'll share with you some of my favorite tools and some success stories. And then we will move into our full-blown A, a Q&A. So we have two hours. Really, I think we need an hour and a half, but 30 minutes is dedicated just to your questions. So don't be shy. Um, make sure that, that you ask some questions so that you're ready to get started as soon as we get off the call this weekend or next week. As you can see at the bottom, that's a little bit of information about me that gives you the qualifications of mine and tells you why I am teaching this webinar today. All right. So let's meet Sarah. Let's talk about her story. Sarah is a small business owner like I said, that is built on my personal experiences as well as some experiences from recent clients that I've had. And I've been in business for 12 years with the marketing agency have and launched a new business in 2019 that's just recently started to take off. So I don't have a lot of time. So I love AI. It helps us to cut time from our schedule in terms of creating all the things. What's some of Sarah's challenges? She has a limited budget, right? So when you are working with a limited budget, you actually have to do more with less. Maybe you're a solopreneur and you're the only person in your business right now. Maybe you are in need of content creation and you're trying to kind of streamline and make that consistent, right? Maybe you're feeling the overwhelm, right, 
from having to create all the things, especially as it relates to marketing, right? It's one thing to do your business, create your products, fulfill your services. It's another thing to be able to market all of those things consistently so that you don't hit those lows or those plateaus in your revenue. And so the turning point in this story is that Sarah discovers AI and all of the AI tools, a lot of them still for free, right, that she can use. So during this time, I just want to hear from you all, whether it's in the chat or you want to come off of mute, what are some of your own marketing challenges? Give me one, at least. We're, we have a small group. Um, and if you want, I can kick it off. Consistency. Consistency. I know that one well. So consistency with what in particular though? Consistency with email, consistency with social media, content creation and posting, or consistency in general? Consistency with keeping up on email as well as um, content posting. Okay. Perfect. So we will definitely address that because one of the things that for me, right, I started a marketing newsletter years ago and like Kyra, I've had issues with consistency until AI hit the scene. So having to research, create the newsletter and then publish it and send it out was a whole thing. And now AI has made that a lot easier. So Tyler says, keeping up with the trends and the demands of all the other elements of running a business nonprofit, I feel like I'm always drowning in the to-do. Yes, Tyler, for sure. Um, one of the things that I will talk about in the later tools section is a tool called Perplexity AI, which... I absolutely love, it's like Google on steroids because not only does it give you the latest news and you can segment it based upon topic, but it will also give you the sources. So I love it. It even works with a tool called make.com, M-A-K-E, which if you want to share that content with your client or with your email list, you can do that and set up the automation once and just have it run in the background until you cut it off. Wouldn't that be nice? It's like having an employee that you don't have to talk to except one time. So we'll talk about that. Terrence says, making time to do it and making sure the content is valuable to the people that I'm targeting. I have a small group of followers on Instagram, larger on my personal Facebook page, and much larger on LinkedIn. How do I get some of them to my other spaces and can AI help? Yes, Terrence, it can for sure help because one of the things that people underestimate, I feel, is the ability of content to push people in the direction that you want them to go or inspire people in the direction that you want them to go. Case in point, when you have a following on any social media platform, doesn't matter which one you have, that following is only accessible at the whim of that social media platform. And I will share a story. I had a client that I worked with several years back. She, was, she had a bakery in Charlotte, North Carolina. And the bakery was thriving, but it was because every day she sent out the special of the day at 7 a.m. And that's what drove people into her business, into her bakery in Charlotte or in the suburb of Charlotte. One day when she was moving, she somehow lost track she got a new laptop. She lost track of her Facebook login. Because you all know that, I mean, when you're using the same laptop or desktop computer, you probably save your password so you can get in. Well, at the time, she thought that that would transfer over and she did not remember the password to her Facebook business page. Unfortunately, she could 
not get access to her Facebook business page. So what happened to all those thousands of followers? They didn't hear from her for days. And immediately she started to feel the shift because the revenue started on a roller coaster ride. All because she lost access to our Facebook page. And for weeks, we tried to get Facebook to restore the page and give her access. And they wouldn't. They kept making her jump through hoops and sending different documentation to prove she was who she was. And so her access to, I think it was at that point, 10, 12,000 local followers was cut off for three to four weeks which impacted her revenue. So I always tell people that if you are a business owner, right, the most valuable digital asset you have in your business is your email list. No one can take it from you. Nobody can um, do anything to it. As long as you have it somewhere, right, on your computer, you can also print it out. You can have it on Google Drive. You can have it anywhere you will have access to a pool of buyers, to a pool of interested people for your business. And you can take that whatever wherever you want to take it. Okay, so Amber shares, I struggle where to start because I have more than one group to target. I also do not like being on social media personally, but I understand this is a vital part of it. Can there be a way to balance this issue? Amber, yes, it can. Um, The one major thing that I love about ChatGPT and all of the language models similar to it, like Claude and Perplexity and Diamond um, and Google Gemini, is that it can tell you how to target those groups. So if you tell, and I would love to use this as a case study, if you tell ChatGPT, I'm not excited about being on social media personally, tell me all of the strategies that I can do for these groups of people to help me reach them and then engage and convert them into um, a client or a customer. It will share some strategies and ideas that I bet at least one of them you haven't heard of or haven't considered. So I would love to when we get to chat GPT and the things they can do to use this as a case study, if you're okay with it, let me know in the chat. So thank you all for sharing and engaging. I appreciate it. I know that it's Friday. And so because it's Friday, you can be um, a little tired and you're just like, just give me the information. I get it. So I appreciate you all's willingness to engage. So here are some other marketing time monsters, right? Thank you, Terrence. I appreciate that. We talked about content creation and management and being consistent, as Kyra said earlier. We talked about social media scheduling and engagement, right? Because even if you are doing social media marketing and you don't mind it, there's still the follow-up. They're still having to respond to the comments, right? So, and there's an AI tool that will help you with that too. Um, customer service and follow-up is something I didn't hear. And customer service is, is really important from having un, a positive and a great onboarding client experience that sets you up for success throughout the project um, or throughout fulfilling the service to the follow-up, right? Which includes email marketing and list ma management. So all of these things used to take up a lot more time and costs a lot more money than it does now. AI has literally leveled that playing field for those people that have issues with consistency, have issues with, especially if you're on a tight budget because email marketing tools cost money, right? And because of that, um, a lot of people have found it difficult to maintain that consistency and create that visibility that they need to scale or grow their business. So now I just want you to share in the chat how much time right now, when you do do any of these tasks, how much time do you currently spend on each? For me, before AI, 
um, content creation used to take me three to five hours a week. Three to five hours a week. Um, and that would be for some clients as well as my own business. So content creation always kind of fell through the cracks because it's so time consuming. But if you don't create it, you don't have anything to post on social media, right? Taryn says four to eight hours weekly and when I have time. Tyler says way too much time as I hype fixate on the smallest of details. Yes, Tyler. We, um, thank you for sharing. We all kind of look at the content and say, is this, really what I want to share. Is this going to resonate? Is this going to get engagement? Should I use a different image? Did I make that caption engaging enough? Should I use emojis, right? We all have that, I think, complex when it comes to posting on social media. But I do want to share this, and this helped me, and hopefully it will help some of you, is that the more you post on social media, whatever social media platform you choose, the more data you get back. And that data is so beneficial because then you're allowing your audience to tell you what they like and what they don't like, right? So now it's not posting on Facebook just to be posting. It's posting with data in mind. So, or data collection in mind. So again, I'll give you an example. Number one, always detach yourself from your content. For me, in the early years, because I've been in social media marketing for 12 years now, every time a post did not get likes, shares, or comments, I took it personally. I was like, oh man, why didn't they like that post? And I would obsess over it, that post not doing well. So what I decided to do was turn it into a game. And... I would not look at the engagement until after every 10 posts. So I would post 10 times and I would schedule it and I would just let it run. I didn't look at it. I didn't look, if I got notifications that a comment came through, I would respond to the comment and that is it. And so I started doing that because it allowed me to not take things personally. And then when I started looking at my social media statistics as data collection, as using it to tell myself, okay, what do I need to post more of? And what do I need to post less of? I eventually started to see my social media engagement improve because I was fixated on the numbers. I was fixated on the data and saying, okay, so my followers like stories in Facebook. My followers like video and less imagery. My followers like when I tell more stories versus when I just give random facts or advice. So try to look at it that way, Tyler, um, at least for a month and see if that doesn't help. Does anybody have any questions on what I just said? Or was it pretty clear? Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about AI and how it can help. I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm so, oh, go ahead. All right. So say that last part again. So you said in Facebook, they like the stories more? Yes. So in Facebook, um, what I found, and this was, about two years ago. And I don't know how many of you actually use stories, but what happens is if you noticed two or three years ago, right? Well, yeah, right during the pandemic, a little bit after the pandemic, because people were at home. And so social media engagement actually increased significantly because people were at home, right? What else were we doing besides watching videos and being online um, when we weren't working or on a Zoom conference call? So social media engagement went up, but then shortly thereafter, right, we started to see during the pandemic and a little bit before, we started to see the algorithm being messed with. So 
what I mean by that is if you had 1,000, I'm just pulling numbers from the air. If you had 1,000 followers on Facebook, what you should have seen that most people that I worked with saw, and I saw my own business, that only a small percentage were seeing, even seeing the post, right? So out of 1,000 people, maybe only 50 people or 50 to 100 people would see the post. And so that was Facebook's algorithm and their bots saying, okay, is this content even worth us pushing out to more people? Because they're testing if with those 50 people, there's a higher level of engagement, they will push it out to more people. And so the algorithm was actually messing with visibility of the post. That was the first issue, right? Did anybody see that except for me? Um, I did. Yes. So, and that was irritating, right? Because you're creating content and people are not even seeing it. And yes, to Amina's point, right? Um, social media advertising was helping people get visibility. But before they started messing with the algorithm, you could get a significant amount of visibility without having to advertise. So that was the issue at first. And so what happened was, especially on Instagram, but then on Facebook as well, stories became a great place because they would push out stories because it was their newest and latest tool. So your content on your Facebook page as a traditional post would be seen by 50 to 100 people going back to our 1,000 followers. But if you did a story, it would be pushed out to 500 people. If you did a reel, right? Y'all remember Instagram reels and how amazing it was when the first launch? It's still good, but it was amazing when the first launch. If you did a reel, it would be seen by 700 of those 1,000 people. So it was about using the best tool or the best feature that was new. Fast forward now, they really want you to advertise, but those stories and those reels are a way beyond the post to actually reach more of your followers and more of their friends and associates than just posting regularly. And so AI is very beneficial in creating those types of content because you got to be on screen or you got to take video, right? Um, or a lot of pictures to make that work for you. And now with AI, it's so super easy to put your voice and insert your voice into a video. It's so super um, easy and fast to create a video from an image. So that is, is where AI shines, especially with social media marketing. So... Amina says, I think I need social media advertising that will help my business grow to the next level. Um, Amina, social media advertising is definitely beneficial when you have the budget. And so I'm saying that because I've worked with a lot of clients who used money that they probably shouldn't have or the last of, right, in terms of their budget. And they didn't have their target audience dialed in yet. They didn't have their messaging dialed in yet. And so it didn't deliver the customers and then they, it soured them on social media advertising. So I will say that yes, social media advertising for sure works when you're ready and make sure that you're using AI tools to generate that information so that it's the best use of your budget. And I always suggest when you're testing, because you definitely need to test your creatives, your copy, that you use $5 a day. And then as you collect that data, you see I'm, I keep saying data, because um, it's that important. As you collect that data and hone in on which ads are working, then you can scale. Toya, for those who don't know um, some social media jargon, can you explain what copy is? Yes, I can. Thank you for uh, um, pointing that out to me because, you know, I live in this world and I always think everybody lives in the world with me and they don't. Um, copy is the text that you will see in an ad. And we can definitely look at some examples. It is the caption under an Instagram post or under a Facebook post that has an image or a video. 
It is the words that you see in an email. Collectively, it's any type of words that you see in marketing materials and copywriting, right, is the skill that goes along with that. And copywriting is very underestimated and undervalued in how much impact it can have on your business. So if you have not, right, thought about your copy and your messaging, we're going to use ChatGPT to kind of nail it down. Because I took a very expensive eight-week copywriting class to learn it. And let me leave by saying, again, it was expensive. And it was eight weeks. And now AI can do it for you. So y'all know I'm a little salty, right? Because now I really just rely on ChatGPT to use it. But that's how important copywriting is. Okay, so let's go into the content creation, as I call it, conundrum. Because creating creating good content consistently, back to Kyra's point, is number one, time consuming if you're not using AI tools. And number two, it can be overwhelming because you feel like, okay, you're looking at other people in your niche or industry and you're like, how do they create all of this content to show up on social media daily. Sometimes if you're following people on TikTok, multiple times a day, how are they doing it? And I'm here to tell you before they were just putting in the time, but now they're using tools to help with that content creation. So you see on the screen, I have listed some of the tools out on the second line, starting with ChatGPT, Jasper, both of those um, have... ChatGPT has a free version, of course, as you all probably know. Jasper is a paid tool, but it's worth the money. CapCut is a free tool, but it has a premium option. Runway ML has a free option as well and more. So you can generate engaging blog posts and social media posts in a fraction of the time. And then you can get back to focusing on growing your business, doing the other things. So I heard from some of you that this is a struggle. As you can see, Sarah, our fictitious small business owner, now has cut her content creation time by 70%, right? So the group activity now is I want to show you how ChatGPT, and that's my favorite um, language learning model, but there are tons of them out there how ChatGPT can create a post in under five minutes. Are y'all interested in seeing that? Yes. Awesome. Now, I like to do it because I, I like to ask for a volunteer or two volunteers because I create content all the time and I don't want anybody to think, well, you know, she's been using it for her business so it's easier. So I want to start with somebody's else's business. So can somebody in the chat let me know um, what's your business? And that's all you need to tell me. You don't need to tell me and maybe your target market, but let's not. Just tell me your business and let's see how ChatGPT does. I'm going to stop sharing and pull up ChatGPT quickly. And then even to incentivize, right? Okay. So Latoya is saying child care. High name twin, by the way. <laughs> um, Aries says, let me go back. African art. Okay. So let's start with child care and then we'll go into African arts. And if we have time, one more person can put in the chat. their business or niche. So Tyler says, I have a nonprofit that focuses on reducing queer youth suicidality. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, Tyler. I think Tyler, you were you were on our August workshop, correct? 
because I remember your business, I think. Okay, so you see, I'm using ChatGPT 4.0. Even if you're using the free version of ChatGPT, you have access to a limited number of results in ChatGPT 4.0. So everybody has access to this. Now, ChatGPT, right, um, 4, which is the legacy model that you see, that's the paid version. But ChatGPT 4.0, is their newest feature. So we're gonna go into childcare. And Latoya, I'm assuming that you do it for people just in Erie, correct? So I'm going to ask first and foremost, yes, okay, thank you, Latoya. I'm gonna ask ChatGPT first and foremost to give me the three best targets, right? In terms of people, for this content. And I'm going to show you why I'm doing that. Now, let me do this caveat. My prompts are typically four to six sentences, but because of time, I'm not going to make them that long. So that does impact your results. The more detailed you are, the better it is. So you will see, I will always tell ChatGPT to act as a role of some sort, act as a social media marketing consultant. This is important because it helps to set the tone for ChatGPT. And I'm even going to say specializing in the daycare industry. So does everybody see that when you're using ChatGPT or any specific language learning model, whether it's Claude, whether it's Gemini, whether it's perplexity, does not matter. Um, it's so important to give it a role and you don't have to word it like I'm wording it, but you need to ask it to kind of act or, or think like a particular role. I've even used act as an award-winning videographer, right? To give me some ideas for, um, YouTube shorts and Instagram reels. So now I'm going to say I need to create three ideal client avatar profiles for my marketing content. So that's all we're going to do. I'm going to say be specific, include challenges, gender, or demographic information that will help me craft engaging and con content that converts. Early and often. Okay, so let's see what it says. So you see it's, first of all, you see where it says memory updated, right? So I love this model because as long as you're in this particular thread, it will remember everything. And we're doing it for a, we're doing it this way for a reason. And you will see it in just a second. So it's giving first time mom, it's giving her name Emily, her age, her location, right? Administrative assistant. She's married with a one-year-old child. And this is what we need to make sure our content is cutting through the noise. What are her challenges? Emotional, struggles with separation anxiety, practical, looking for flexible daycare hours to accommodate her and her spouse's unpredictable work, work schedules. Health concerns, once a daycare with strong focus on hygiene and health, especially post-pandemic. What are priorities and the marketing angle, content focusing on trust, nurturing relationships, and the positive impact of early childhood education. Now, Latoya is our resident expert. Latoya, do you think that that would be beneficial if we created content that 
dealt with some of those issues. While we're waiting for Latoya to get back to us, let's talk about the other two. Career-focused dad, Marcus is 35. His challenges are time management, education and convenience. Priorities are structured learning programs, technology-friendly communication, and reliable long-term care. Number three is small business owner, Sophia. Sophia is a little bit older. She's a bakery owner. She's married with two kids. Affordability stability and engagement. So let's see what Latoya says. Latoya says, yes, I think to that. Um, Terrence says, I did it for my business too. And my avatars are on point. Awesome, Terrence. I love it. So now let's take that to the next level because we're using this, right, as the foundation to build content that, again, is going to resonate, is going to get engagement and cut through the noise, Right. So now I'm saying, now create 10 social media posts. We'll say for Instagram. Her ideal client avatar include images or a video that I need to include along with captions and hashtags. Now, let's see. Now, I'm not advocating, right, that you just copy and paste. What I am advocating is that you use this as inspiration and ideas. Um, and we're going to talk about how you can get it to chat GPT being it <clears throat> to create content in your tone of voice, right? Because we don't want it to come off robotic. So the first time mom, nurturing care, smiling daycare teacher, you know, holding a baby is the first image. Now, this image cannot be used by stock photos. So it's giving you an idea, Latoya, that if you take care of kids, you know, that young, that needs to be held, that you go in and take the image in your daycare of that. So let's not use stock photos or stock video that does not resonate as well, unless you absolutely have to, right? Unless you absolutely have to. So here are some of the posts. based upon our client avatar. And you see that it's breaking down all three. If it stops, all you have to do is hit continue generating as we probably all have experienced if we're using chat GPT. And now I'm going to take client avatar three and I'm going to ask it, right? I'm going to say, love the post for Avatar 3. <clears throat> and I'm going to say, edit the caption for my brand tone. Latoya, if you're still here in the chat, let me know what is like, what's your brand tone? Is it fun? Is it trustworthy? Is it relatable? Give me like two or three words. I'm going to put trustworthy. Latoya had to uh, hop off for a hot second. Um, somebody called her I think but I can tell you that it is trustworthy and it it's trustworthy it's reliable and it's um uh welcoming thank you
Now I'm going to say expand on four of the posts. So does everybody see what I'm doing? <laughs> I'm sorry. So you see, I what I'm doing is I'm asking it to revise the copy or the caption and putting it in different types of words, right? So what ChatGPT is going to do is, is that's going to put the essence of the post. Uh -oh. And Can everybody still hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Perfect. Okay. So if we see now, after we asked it to revise itself, now let's take a look at post one, affordability, right? It's saying a graphic showing a breakdown of flexible payment options. If you haven't thought about having that, that might be a good image to include. With the caption, running a small business can be tough. So now we're being relatable, but finding quality child care doesn't have to be. We know how important it is for you to balance your family's budget, right? So I like that. What do you all think? Let me know in the chat or come off of mute. Post four is expanded as I requested it to be. So it's giving me more words. Now, if I wanted it to, let's say revise post one, two, and three with simplified language, right, targeting just moms. Let's see what it does. Now, similar tone, but very different um, in terms of how it's worded. It's even added some emojis in there. Now, the one thing that I absolutely love when you're creating content is if there's someone or a company or a brand that you like, you can even ask ChatGPT to revise again based upon their tone. So let's just say, does anybody have a recommendation of someone that they would like to see that's public, right? Well, I'll tell you what. I will say revise one more time using the tone of Oprah. Perfectly blended with the storytelling vibe. of Iyanla Banzan. So again, this is a starting point. This is not where we copy and paste, but you can take inspiration from this and at least it's giving you a starting point. So it should be shortcutting the process for you.
right? So you see post one, again, this is chat GPT's interpretation. Um, mamas, let me tell you something. I probably wouldn't say mamas. I might say moms. I would say, let me share with you. I see you, you know, out here doing it all, something like that. But I would give worded the way I would want to, but I'm like, okay, yeah, I could see where this would be relatable. Social development, right? Now we're getting into stories, picture this. I would probably use this with just a few edits. Um, post number three, emphasizing consistency, being welcoming, um, which is what Kyra shared with us in Latoya's absence. I would include, let's be real, life can be unpredictable for sure. I do like that. So I would definitely use this. Can you all see those marks on the screen or is it just me? I see them. Okay. Let me know because I don't know how to erase them right off except for coming out of the share and coming back in. But if they... Um, If they're distracting, just let me know. Terrence said, this is what it did to mine. Beloved, let me ask you this. Why blend in when you were born and stand out? Yes. And it's so funny because Iyanla uses the word beloved all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So I love it. I love it. And again, you can create a custom GPT that will take your tone and create all of your copy in your tone. All you need to do is feed it in some of your emails, some of your YouTube videos, anything that it can kind of take from you what it um what you say or talk. So it's really intuitive like that, but what I love is that it gives you the ability right to be able to literally customize content for you. Does anybody have any questions about that? I want to use one more example. And if I go back to chat, I think somebody put African art, right? Let's change service and product focus. I need a content calendar. for my business promoting African, I'll say promoting and selling. I don't know if that's true, but we're just using the inspiration. But now I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna show you all something else you can do with ChatGPT. And I'm gonna sit, just to chat GPT, ask me any questions you need to, to craft content that is unique. So you see, I'm saying to chat GPT, I need you to change focus, right? So do you see it's asking me questions? Who's my target audience? Am I targeting art collectors, interior designers, or individuals looking to learn more about African culture? What types of art are you focused on? Do you showcase specific artists? All of these things can help ChatGPT create unique and engaging content for you. So we're gonna do a couple of things. We're just gonna answer some of the questions. Um, whoever's put African art, can you tell me some of the answers to this as well? So maybe you can take some of this content. Okay. <laughs> Who's your target audience? Excuse me. Uh, my name is Emina, Emilio Kole. Yes, hi Emina. Uh, I'm the owner of Erie African Arts. 
-hmm. Okay. Awesome. So who are you? Well, are you, are you selling art again? Like what, what's your focus, the focus of your business? So my business is focused on African art and culture. And they, so I bring, I sell all different type of arts from Africa, handcraft from Kenya, from Uganda, from Tanzania, from Congo, and from Burundi. Okay. So there are stones, there are masks, antique, very old, and some copies. And I have different clothes, different shoes, all handcraft from Africa. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. I love it. So I'm going to... Shorten that just a little bit, just for time's sake. Um, do you showcase any of the people that are creating or developing? Yeah, so I have a different group we used to work together in Africa. Mm -hmm. So we always communicate. Yeah. So I send them money. I give them the order. They, sh they ship me the stuff. Okay. Yeah. Because that's what I used to do back there. Okay. Perfect. Um, What do you want or what is your brand tone? Is it educational? Is it vibrant? Vibrant. Vibrant. Okay. And I'm going to show you all a trick. I capitalize when I want to make sure that ChatGPT gets the message on something like brand tone. In some cases, I want you all to see the difference. I just capitalize the word and maybe put a couple of exclamation points there. Um, promotional goals is to increase brand awareness and orders. I'm going to tell ChatGPT, I need enough posts for a month oh, for the holiday shopping season, because that's the time we're in, right? So let's see what it does. So you can see that's breaking down month yeah. by month. Um, the theme is to introduce the craftsmanship, craftsmanship and the stories behind the art and the clothing, and simultaneously build excitement for the holiday season. So here are a couple of the posts. It gives us the same thing as it did before, an idea up for an image, right? It's suggesting a collage. And it's trying to capture that vibrant tone that we asked it for, along with hashtags. It's giving a storytelling element to a series that it can we can use called Meet the Makers right? It's getting inspiration because I think Etsy did a Meet the Makers um, series a couple years ago or during the pandemic. So it's taking that. If you want something different, if you want to call yours something different, let me show you how to do that, right? And I'm going to say in week one, post two, use Meet the Makers for the series name. I'm gonna say, give me three other options that are unique and 
brings the focus to African traditions, stories, we'll say, or um, people. Let's just see what it says. Okay, those are not bad. Um, what do you think, I mean, of uh, uh, having a series that spotlight the artists that you work with called one of those three things? Or something similar. I mean, Meet the Makers is cool, but it's kind of generic. A lot of people create that i would also if you liked one of these yeah um, amazing or, yeah if you wanted to edit one of these i probably would uh put them in google right uh -huh. and see if somebody has already used one of these names and if they haven't i would get on that and start doing those stories probably next week uh -huh. um especially since we're in a big we're moving into a big holiday and buying season here in the States. Okay, okay. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. Yeah. So here are some of the other posts, right? That they came up with. I like that one because it's putting people in the idea of giving some of these as gifts. Um, I do love the artist spotlights and you could just take some of the copy, right? Some of the words. Yeah. Um, I love this post. Number four, supporting why supporting African artists matter. So I think that um, some of this, you know, you could actually use, especially if you're short on time because September is just flying by, right? It's already September 20th. So does anybody else want to go and see what they can um, share? I think we have time for one more person. It's one o'clock. Can I ask a question before you go forward? Yes. So... So I'm confused. I get confused about really basic things. Like I was in chat GPT, it got stuck and then it got unstuck and created some really beautiful things for me. But now I don't, there's two things I don't know. I don't know how to make this train of thought that I just did into GPT of its own. Mm -hmm. Was I supposed to do that before I started? Yes. So if you wanted to create a custom GPT, right, then you have to actually go back in and create that from the beginning. So let's go in and do you see where it says explore G GPTs? So I opened up my sidebar, Terrence, um, and, cl and clicked explore GPTs. Now you can use a GPT that somebody else created, right? Or you can go here in the upper right-hand corner and click create. And this is where you can create your own GPT based upon, you can even copy and paste what it's already given you, right? And you can say, I'd like to make or create a copywriter specifically for my business. And you see it says updating GPT. What it's going to come back is probably it's going to ask you some questions. And it's pretty intuitive. So you can take, if you like the tone, right, of what they were giving you, then you can just copy and paste that and put it in here. So it's recommending a name, business copy specialist. I'm going to say sounds good. And that's going to ask what you want it to look like. These are things that I don't really care about. 
because I really just want the end result, right? So I don't care what it looks like. If you wanted to sell this GPT when the GPT store is available on ChatGPT, then you might come in and change the name or the logo. If you don't, if it's literally just for your business, then you don't have to, then you can just keep going. So did everybody catch what I just said? If you have the premium version of ChatGPT, which is $20 a month, which gives you access to the GPT store, if you create a GPT for yourself and you make it public, when the GPT store comes to a price, it's just like the iTunes store, they will eventually start to monetize this when they get enough people using it, right? The people who have created GPTs that other people find valuable are going to get paid for this. So if you're using it, you might as well go ahead and see if you can make some money and make this an additional stream of income. My grandma used to call it mailbox money. Yeah. I have one other short question. Yes. You talk about scheduling the post. Is there a place I can go to to see how to do that? Because I couldn't find it. Um. So chat GPT does not have a scheduler built into it, right? You would have to use a third party tool for that. But what you can do is, and, and let me just finish the my thought on the GPT itself, right? So if you like the copy that it gave you, then what you can do is, cause it's gonna ask you like, what do you want me to do? If you can see, over to the right, you can test this out. Product descriptions, catchy headlines, engaging emails, ad copy. Um, I'm gonna say emphasize content for Instagram captions, Facebook posts, and hooks for my LinkedIn post, right? That's why I'm going to, to ask to emphasize. And then what you can do is literally, you see the paper clip here, you can attach files from your computer. Like if you took that content and put it in a Google doc, you can actually add it in here because it's asking what kind of tone or style should the specialist use, right? Go ahead, copy and paste and put that right in there and then you're good to go. So let me get out of this really quickly and go back to our thread and just use this as an example. You can ask ChatGPT to give you a particular schedule, right? And I will use Amina's post as an example. I'm gonna say, love it. Now give me a content calendar, which is what people in the industry say, or a posting schedule, you could say that, for Instagram and Facebook that doesn't repeat or it looks like I've just copied and pasted. Because what people typically had the experience of doing before AI is that you would take the same posts, especially the posts that were good, right? You could put them on Instagram and Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, and Pinterest and create a video on YouTube. And it was the same content, right? So you would post on Monday at eight and then Wednesday at four and then Friday at seven in the morning, but it was the same content across all of those channels. And so what happens is if people are following you on all of those channels or on a couple of those channels, what people would typically do is they would unfollow you on some of them because you were posting the same content. So that's why I put in that extra part. So it's thinking. And you see it's actually going to share an approach that maintains 
a different feeling. And so it's giving it to us week by week. The days, and so you can take this content, Terrence, and you can put it in a social media scheduler like Metra Cool, um, which is the one that I use in my agency for clients. I love that because it gives you a, a real uh, good report on engagement from month to month and from week to week. And it has all of the social media platforms, including Pinterest in it. If you don't want to use Metrical, you can also use Buffer. Um, you can use the scheduler inside of Facebook Meta Business Suite as well. But you can literally just take the schedule that they're giving you and use it that way. Is that is that helpful, Terrence? Did I answer your question? That's very helpful. Thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. Tyler is saying in the chat, when you are creating a GPT and others start using it, does it share the content others are creating? For example, if I make one for parents to ask the questions that they want to ask their queer child, but shouldn't because it's triggering, will that information be stored or is it only seen by that person who asked the question? Um, Tyler, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to it right off. I would have to do some research. Um, we can ask, you can ask ChatGPT um, that question as well. I would say when you're building the custom GPT, I would tell it, I only want these questions and answers to be used with the person interacting with it at the time. Do not store it for future use or reference um, and see what it says. I would now, if it does not give you a good clarifying answer, I would actually go into support in ChatGPT and send it to the company and see what they would say. But that is a very good question and I can see why you asked it. You're welcome. Okay, so let's get back to the slides. Um, let, let me ask, since this is a replay, right? And I know that Kyra is recording it. Do you all like going over the tools and features and seeing how I would do it more than the slides? Because, you know, sometimes I'm just like, it's cool for you to tell me what to do. That's great. But sitting in your seats before, um, I also like for people to show me how to do it. So are you all enjoying this portion of the presentation or do you want me to go back and do the slides as well? Because you know, I can do either or. Okay, so it looks like Tyler is saying, I like seeing you create it. Okay, that's cool. Terrence says, I like seeing you create it also, but it is because I saw the first. Okay. So if we can get a couple more people back in, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to stop sharing the screen until I get kind of an idea on the chat to see which way um, the group polls. And I'm just going to set up the slides. Cause the next thing was talking about customer service um, and how to use chat bot. But if you want to talk about something else, because we have such a small group, we can certainly customize it. I definitely would like to know about using the chat box. Okay. Um, I think that's beneficial to everyone's business, including Erie's Black Wall Street. Okay. Perfect. Let me set up the slides. Actually, let me not. Let me, the slide just talks about how chatbots are, you know, really timely because they can provide personalized responses to your customer's questions when you're not in business or when your business is not open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the slide or chat GPT and I'm going to show you 
how to create one. In fact, we're going to do it in Claude instead because Claude is a lot more intuitive for this, right? I use a mix, everybody, and, and this is just how I do it. You can find the process or the strategy that works best for you. Um, I use the free version of Claude along with the pro version of ChatGPT. There are a couple of other tools that you can use as well when it comes to creating a chatbot. And so, um, but if you have nowhere to, if you don't know where to start, starting with Claude or even chat GPC or Google Gemini is good. And so what I want to do is show you how to do that, right? So does everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Josie, thank you so much. Um, so I'm going to say I need a chatbot for my nonprofit website or what's that organization? Website. Where do I start? Can't get any more basic than that, correct? So what I love is that it literally walks you through the steps. It is going to suggest what's the purpose of the chatbot? Will it be handling frequently asked questions? Will it be collecting donations? Will it be scheduling appointments, right? So then it suggests where you should go. Should you use dialogue? Dialogue flow. Ooh, it is Friday, y'all. I'm sorry. Mini chat, chat fuel, mobile monkey, or TARS. Now, I will say that I have not used dialogue flow. Um, I have used mini chat. It's pretty easy to set up. I've used mobile monkey. It's pretty easy to set up. I've never even heard of TARS. But that's why we're using this, right? So we can get a list of the tools that we need to assess or research. Then it says design the conversation flow, map out typical interactions and responses your chatbot will have, create the content, implement tests, and integrate with your website. So it's giving you, right, all of the, the things. But then I love, do you need more details? And can you elaborate on choosing a platform designing conversations? And we're going to say yes. Um, Kyra, if you can, let's use, right, um, your needs as a use case. What would, if you all had a chatbot, what would you need us to do? Answer questions, schedule appointments, get people to turn in some information. Answer questions. And um, I think the other thing would be like gather information. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to write what you just said. Um, and I'm going to ask, can you recommend the best tool for a chatbot that is budget friendly and easy to use? And then I'm going to say after that, I need examples of conversation flow. So you see that it is telling us the answers to our questions. It's saying, consider using TARS or Mobile Monkey. I know Mobile Monkey, don't know TARS. 
Both are user friendly and offer free or low cost plans suitable for nonprofits. Oh, thank you, Terrence. Um, I like Claude also because it will tell you the answers to the questions based upon the information that it knows about each tool that is recommending. So that saves you time from researching the whole list of tools, right? And now you're narrowing down which ones that you definitely should consider. So we've gone from, I think, four or five to two. And now it's saying, right, that TARS has an easy drag and drop interface. Mobile Monkey is user-friendly too, but it has a visual builder. So it just depends on which one, right, you would want to check out first. Um, it also, Mobile Monkey was built to go with Facebook Messenger, but they're, you know, telling you the details. Now, it even is giving you recommendations. TARS might be slightly easier for beginners. So I would then go check out TARS. Um, after that, because if you're new to creating chatbots, right, you do have to take time to create the conversation flow. And that can be pretty, I don't know, time consuming would be a word that I would use. Not hard, but definitely time consuming. So I like to ask AI to help with that. So I use Chat Lemon as an agency because we're building chatbots for other people and that's built in to that software, right? But when you're doing it for yourself, then you definitely may want to look at what their examples or recommendations are. So you can see that it's, you know, giving you an idea for um, what the chatbot would say when it was first engaged. These are the options it can provide. Then secondly, it's actually asking, well, to the person that's using it, what would you like to do, right? And you can use this as a starting point, Kyra, or anybody who's interested in using a chatbot. And then as you can see the questions or the conversation flow, you can change it to whatever you want it to do. So let's just say, I want the chatbot to focus on answering questions. and gather information for people who would like to participate in our programs. Redo the conversation flow based on this information. And now it is writing a conversation flow based upon that as an example, right? And you can just go through that step and that process as you need to. Does anybody have any questions? Kyra, is this helpful at all? Extremely. I'm probably gonna have this done in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, I like Claude, and just so I can level set, ChatGPT is great. I use it because it was the first one to, I use Jasper, but it was the first free tool, um, language learning model or LLM to hit the market. So I, I'm just familiar and comfortable with it. So that's why I use ChatGPT. Claude and Google Gemini definitely have their places. And because they have their places, right? 
I want to be very specific to say I use them for different things. So I use ChatGPT for content creation specifically, especially with custom GPTs. I use Claw for things like this for like if I want to build an app, right, that will help service uh, my clients, I do it in Claude because Claude was built, you know, with programmers in mind, although anybody can use it. Claude also has a great way of creating human sounding content. So if you want social media posts and you want it to sound much more human and less robotic and not have to go back and forth with the tone, Claude is a great way to start or a great place to start. Google Gemini, I use that for blog posts when I want to help rank a website quickly or when I want to make sure that a YouTube video gets visibility quickly because Google owns YouTube, right? And Google is the king um, of search. And so using their tools help you get better results. Right. Um, and their perplexity when I need to do research, which is what I want to share next, is one of the things that I love because then it's the sources are built right in. So does anybody have any questions? I see that somebody put something in the chat um, about what I just said. Tyler says, does it walk you through how installing to the web page, the chat bot? Um, Tyler, Claude probably could do it based upon the website platform you're using, but the tools itself, I know that Chat Fuel um, does, I believe, Mobile Monkey, they used to. I believe that they do as well. Um, so those individual tools will give you more information about how to install it. It's not very hard. It's literally copying some code and pasting it in a certain place on your website. Okay, so if there are no other questions about that, what I want to do is share a couple of other tools. Um, I will share the slide deck again. And so since we're kind of down to our last 30 minutes, if it's okay with y'all, I'll just do like a demonstration of my favorite tools to help with some of the challenges that we talked about earlier and then um, answer any additional questions. Does that work for everybody left on the call? I think we only have a few people left. Yes, absolutely. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Okay, so perplexity is the next one up. And I'm just gonna stop sharing so and reshare my screen so I can know that it is showing. And perplexity is, again, a language learning model, but it's different because it's designed for people wanting to do research. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. If you go to home, right, or I should say discover, I'm sorry, um, it will give you, kind of like Google Trends, what is happening in the world based upon the topic. So you can see that these are based upon just the number of sheer people interacting and sharing with the content, right? So you can filter out by tech and science, finance, arts and culture, sports, entertainment. Um, we go to arts and culture and just see. But if I want to be very specific, what I will do is I will say what news is trending in Erie, Pennsylvania. So, and voila. You see that it is answering my question and how you would use this, right, is, and I had a client really kind of show this um, wonderfully well. They were a party supply store in 
North Carolina, and this was several years ago, and they were, um, they saw on their Facebook page, right, that a movie was being shot in their town, and it was going to affect traffic significantly, and so they broke the news on their Facebook page. It wasn't like a lot of people were talking about it, and they sent an email out to their email list, like 2,500 comments later, because they only had a couple hundred people on as followers on their Facebook page. Their Facebook page blew up. They actually got probably, they went from a couple hundred followers to a thousand followers just because they broke the news and people were commenting and talking about it on their Facebook page. So I think a lot of times people who are struggling to get engagement consistently on their social media pages underestimate the amount of, I think, news and how news, especially in your local area or in your niche, can get visibility and eyeballs on your social media accounts. So let's even narrow it down a little bit more. And Tyler, I'm going to use, right, your business, if it's okay, um, as another use case. So we're going to kind of switch and we're going to say, what are some of the challenges? This is based on something you asked earlier. For parents of queer teenagers, and young adults. And you see what it's doing for that is beneficial, I would say, or that's really helpful, is that it is going to sources, right? So it's not just pulling this, it's not like ChatGPT or Claude even, where it is asking, like it's, surveying the web and you have no idea where it's pulling from it's telling you where it's pulling this content from right which i think is super beneficial and then you can actually click on the sources and you can go to that website and to that article and then you can share the link to that article if you're interested. If not, you know, you don't have to. Um, but I think that it is helpful because it literally will tell you like more information and then you can do a lot more research. What do y'all think about that? I'm gonna stop sharing for just a second. I would say like that's been one of my probably biggest challenges with with ChatGPT is is every now and again it'll give you a source, but um, it's when it does what is it hallucinates? Because I think that's what the, it's called when AI gives you information that's not accurate. Right. Uh, this makes it way easier to make sure that you're you're not sending someone even where I've had issues in the past of sending someone actually to a page that was like anti-queer or homophobic, but it chat GPT had pulled information from it. And I didn't know I was like setting people up because I was going too fast, you know? So right. this is super helpful. Yeah. Um, I like this because I think chat GPT has its place, right? But research isn't one of those places. <laughs> um, not specific research. I'll say that. I think I like, and custom GPTs, there are actually some custom GPTs that will allow you to find and source content. So, but unless you're using those custom GPTs, you don't know. And with perplexity, one of the things that I love about perplexity um, is that it does give you the, the sources and is beneficial. So it's going to give you the answer, as you can see here, right? The other thing that I absolutely love is that it gives you related questions and related topics, which can help fuel your content creation process, right? 
So you might be asking about one topic, but do you see the related topics? We can't see any more because you stopped the screen share, but oh, I'm believe sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, it's a Friday. I'm so sorry. There we go. Yes, this is incredibly helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then lastly, let me show this. You can also search images in here. So, you know, if you're, because content, again, creation takes time. So if you're looking for images, you can, and you can use these images, right? In your posts, if you so are inclined. Then it has videos. You can download those videos and things like that. Um, now, if you want to do images, you see that the images actually would have to be an upgrade because perplexity is free. I use the free version. Um, if you're going to use it a lot, it might be worth the paid version, right? Um, and I feel like the paid version is definitely beneficial if you're in a research-based industry or niche. So, and I would always recommend, you know, if budget is a consideration, then for sure, do it for one month, gather all the content you need, and then, you know, let it go and use it as you need, instead of just keeping that, that membership, right? So, a couple of more tools that I absolutely love. Um, one is in video AI. I think I talked about that last time. And if you're interested in creating in uh, videos, right? And I could see Tyler for you in video would be definitely an option. Um, because I think that it has its place because sometimes it can bring content to life. Now it's not free. It is twenty or twenty five dollars a month. Um, but what it does do is you could take a link from an article you find in Perplexity. You can dump it into or or add it into in video, right? And then it will create a video for you. Now. I'm going to try to log in. You all bear with me. Hopefully it is not going to go super slow, um, but I just wanna show you all how it works. So I'm gonna go to perplexity, back to perplexity, and I'm going to grab an article. So you see, literally, I'm just copying and pasting, right? And then I'm going to paste the link in here. Now, I can also say, use an empathetic and relatable tone. I'm going to click generate a video because we said, you know, content creation is very time consuming. Um, it gives you a place to start. But one of the things that in video is amazing at, because now it's looking at the article, right? And it, you can see it says browsing, is that you can edit right inside of the tool. So you don't have to download the video, take it someplace else, use a different set of tools. You know, we're not video editors. That's not what we do. So it would take us a ton of time to create this video and having to edit it. But InVideo has made it so user-friendly that 
you can edit the text, you can change the scenes, you can change the music right inside of this tool and then kind of turn it out, especially if you are doing um, shorts and you want to build a YouTube channel. Tyler, I don't know if that's what you are trying to do specifically, but um, you could take this, right, video and then use another tool like, I don't know, CapCut um, or opus opus ai and then create clips and thereby you have more content instead of just this one video so i'm going to let the audience stay the same the look and feel i don't know tyler would it be empathetic or relatable or inspirational which one would i'd probably go more relatable right okay um, and then we're going to stay with YouTube because we know we can use those videos, right? And change them up if we need to. So I'm going to click continue. And now it's creating a video. Now I'm streaming with you all. So I don't know how quickly this is going to work, but you can see that it is, it is working and yeah, not too slowly, and it is trying to find just the right music to make it relatable. It's trying to find the voices um, and do all the things. So if you're creating this on your own or testing it out, you can click notify when ready and then it will, right, send you an email to come back and check it out. So we're gonna let that run in the background. Um, and then there is one more that I want to show you in terms of video creation, and then I will open it up for questions. Okay, so it's thinking. Um, I'm going to stop sharing really quickly. I'm going to let that run in the background. Um, and Tyler, if you want me to, if you put your email in the chat, um, I will make sure that I send it to you. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Do you all ever use CapCut by chance? Or have you ever heard of it? My child uses it and makes me watch their videos all the time. I, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, CapCut is when I started teaching people how to create videos with um, Canva, right? CapCut came out and I would give people the choice because I loved Canva. And so I always thought it was you a little bit more user friendly. And then CapCut expanded and exchanged, you know, and changed some of their features. And I was like, um, oh, my goodness. It's amazing, right? So that's what we're we're going to look at here. One of the things that I love about CapCut is that even though it's you know, it has a premium option or a paid option, you can do so much for free. And so you can take a long video and turn it into shorts. So you use video.ai um, and then decide that you want shorts for your YouTube channel right? Because we all know that shorts are like magic. They help with discoverability. You can do that here for free. You can remove a background. You can upscale your video or your image. Um, you can actually create with AI and turn a script into a video, just like with NVIDIA AI, except NVIDIA AI gives you the ability to edit inside of it. CapCut does not. It will allow you to create a new video, but you can't literally edit all the elements of it. Um, so there's a ton of things that you can do, but one of the things that I absolutely, listen, absolutely love is that you can create avatars. So if you want, like there are a lot of people that don't want to be the face of their brand or the face of their business, or maybe you want an animated version, right? Um, or maybe you want somebody totally different. 
you can create avatars. This is an upgraded option, right? But you can create avatars in here and you can either upload your picture or you can create somebody completely different. I love that, y'all. It was a game changer for me. All right. So that's all I have in terms of, you know, the tools that I want. They are depending on what you're trying to do. Copy.ai is great for writing copy, even better than ChatGPT. Um, I would say if you're looking for a website builder that uses AI that can turn one out in seconds and do blog posts as well, Hostinger, H-O-S-T-I-N-G-E-R, is a great platform that has AI built into it um, as well. So, and it's great for creating blog content. You can also create websites that sell stuff, right? And it's very intuitive. So I'm going to be quiet for a second and ask if y'all have any questions. Would we be able to get a list of the tools that you went over today? Just like, even if they were literally just in list form, that'd be great. Yeah, I can, I can send an email to Kyra to share with the group. Cause I didn't put that together, but I also, I also have a list of 50 of my favorite tools um, that I can share as well. I just need to make a note to myself because I will forget. Anything else? So I have a question. I'm a avid user of all things AI. And this is related, but not related necessarily to doing things specifically for your business. But my question for you is, do you use any of these AI tools in your everyday life to make your, your life simpler? Um, you know, I'm glad that you asked that question because I was thinking about making a series of YouTube videos on that. So I use ChatGPT in my everyday life because I am not the most organized person there is. And so because of that, I use ChatGPT, everything from meal planning um, to, I would say, helping plan for a trip. So I'll give a very real life example. I'm planning my own wedding for October 4th. And, you know, when you think about wedding planning and all the things, plus working, um, I was like, oh my God, like it's a lot. So I had ChatGPT create a schedule with a to-do list um, for me and a spreadsheet that tracks all of the expenses and it whipped it up in no time, right? So yes, to answer your question, I do use it. There is another tool that is AI based as well that allows you to kind of just brain dump um, when you have a lot going on and I'm trying to think of the name of it, I can't remember the name of it. It uses chat GPT in the background, but it also uses Claude and a couple of other ones. Um, I'm looking for it. And it integrates with Google Calendar. So it will send reminders and help schedule things as well for you based upon the notes that you have created inside of it. That's awesome. I definitely need that. Yeah, I love it. I'm looking for it. Yeah, that one literally sounds like a life changer for someone with ADHD, aka me. It's like that <laughs> would make yeah. everything better. I was not diagnosed with ADHD, but I swear to God, <laughs> I have it. Um. Here it is. It's called My Mind, M-Y-M-I-N-D. And so I've only played around with it. Like I haven't set up everything in it, but I'll share my screen. I'll go to it. It seems like a very helpful tool. I just kind of played with it just to see if it was all that it seemed to be. And it seems to be really good. I'll say that. There it is. So 
So it allows you to put URLs, you know, as you search, it has a, a mobile version. So if you're searching on your phone too, it can do that. But um, do y'all want me to play the intro? Just so you can, it does. Hello and welcome to my mind. I'm Lizzie, and I'm going to give you a very brief overview on how. Hold on one second, because I'm um, in video is is working in the background, so that's why it's buffering. I don't, Tyler. I don't want to stop. Well, you know what? I will stop it. Just one second. Oh, Tyler, it did create the video. So once we're done, um, I will share the video with you so you can see what it does. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so it might chop up a little bit. It might buffer a little bit. Because my computer is basically saying, it's Friday. You're asking me to do a whole, whole lot. Um, everything works. Your mind is basically an extension of your real mind. Every time you see something you want to remember, you can bookmark it with a single click. This dress from Celine, in my mind. These shoes, one click and they're in my mind. in my mind. If there's a passage I enjoy from an article I'm reading, I can highlight, right click, and save it to my mind. Or maybe there's a quote that inspires me. Saved in my mind. Or I could save this entire article to read within my mind later. If there's a product I'd like to buy online, I can save it to my mind with a click or a tweet I want to remember. Saved. As you can see, I've instantly saved all of this straight to my mind without breaking my flow or stopping to organize anything. But the best part is, when I go back to my mind, everything is automatically categorized and tagged for me in a visual way. The chair is saved as a product, the tweet as a tweet card, the highlight as a highlight, the quote with its own visual quote card. I did nothing but click save. And now if I search for the dress, it's instantly in front of me. My mind even tells me the brand or designer of the dress. I didn't tag it myself. I didn't save the Celine website. I didn't title it, nothing, but my mind knew. I could also search to see all the dresses I've saved. What if I search for furniture? Now only show me the wooden furniture. Here it is. So as you can see, your new mind is basically like your real mind. Every time you want to remember something you've saved, just search for whatever you think of first. No folders, no complex organization system. Of course, there's more you can do, like finding all the books on your reading list or the books you read this year. Which reminds me, I wanted to send this one to a friend of mine. Or maybe I want to see only the books I've saved for my research project. There they are. I could see all my notes in one place. I could even search for handwritten notes because my mind recognizes handwritten text or text within images. 
You could use my mind for all your to-dos. Hey, I already completed that one. And this entire list is actually important this week, so I'm going to put it top of mind. And there it is. But you'll find out for yourself how it works. Just try it out. The more you add, the better it gets. It's fast, it's fluid, it's intuitive, just like your real mind. So what y'all think? I think that this, for me, looks looks amazing. I'm I'm wondering if like there's like a speak to tech because I'm so often like when I'm in the car or going to get my kids, like I'm like, oh yeah, I can't remember, I can't forget to do this thing. So like I want to talk to it and like I do that with chat a lot. Like don't don't forget that I, you have to do this or this project and it creates a list for me. But if I could get it all in one place, because chat things get gobbled up in, like it just yeah. Um, with Chat GPT too, I would say that I've heard that before Tyler like because you have to go and try and I used to like be spending minutes searching down all the chats literally um you can create a custom GPT to organize all of those things as well if you have the premium version um so that that would solve that problem but I think too yeah you're right I don't know if my mind has that it would be a cool feature to have if if it does now, I do know that if you record the notes from your phone, because it'll integrate with your phone, because um, it's a, a mobile app version or that you can download, then that would be one way to kind of circumvent if it did and interact with it that way. Um, because whatever notes you save, it will upload to your particular account. But I think it's it's definitely beneficial. And I'm surprised. I found out about it a couple of weeks ago. I'm surprised I never heard of it before. And nobody's really talking about it. So real quick, it's funny how two hours just flies by, right? But um, the video is ready. And I just wanted you to take a look at it. Hey everyone, today I'm diving into a topic that's close to my heart, the journey of LGBT parents. And Tyler, if you're still there, one of the things that I love that you can do, um, and I forgot to turn it off, but you can in NVIDIA AI clone your voice by reading just a 30 second sample of something. And if you wanna narrate the video, but not appear in the video, right? That is um, my fiance's voice. That's wonderful yes in this video um so i love that part because you know sometimes you don't want to be the face of the video all the time or any other time so that's one of the other things i love about in video ai yes it's a path filled with love resilience and sometimes some pretty tough obstacles but hey nothing worth having ever comes easy right first up Let's talk about the barriers. Legal and social hurdles can feel like mountains. Adoption and foster care agencies, they don't always play fair. Some still discriminate against same-sex couples, making it harder to create the loving homes that these kids deserve. And the legal recognition of LGBT families. It's a mixed bag that can leave you feeling uncertain and frustrated. But it's not just the legal stuff. Society, friends, and even family can sometimes throw shade. From insensitive remarks to outright hostility, the prejudice LGBT parents face is real and it hurts. It's not just emotional, it impacts the well-being of both parents and kids. Then there's the challenge of explaining your family to your children. Kids are naturally curious, and when their friends don't understand diverse family structures, it can get tricky. But these moments are golden opportunities. To and you can see, I'm sorry to, to stop it again, but you can see the video is three minutes long, right? So it really can be edited and chopped up in a lot of different ways. And then if you want to edit it in any kind of way, do you see this pencil, Tyler? Yeah. At the bottom, 
um, it will allow you to, to change up, right, the title. You can go into the outline and change up anything. So you can go into all of the, the elements of the video and change anything you want um, to make it look different. So like if you didn't want this scene, if you wanted a different scene with a boy and his dad or, you know, something, you could change that up. You can change what um, the narrator, whoever it is, whether it's you or somebody else, you can change what they're saying over the video as well. And then it will update to reflect your changes. That's just like insane to me. <laughs> it is, right? It really is. And, and here's the thing. Since it launched a year ago, it's made improvements. And I think by this time next year, it'll be crazy at what you can do with this. Yeah. And this is from the story. Remember the, we grabbed the story from Perplexity and we didn't do any of the research. We, you may, and I always, in all fairness, I always tell people, do not create content that you have not first read embedded yourself, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you may have read the blog post or the article and then turn around and say, oh, this would be great. I would love to share this with my community. But instead of creating an article yourself, like you would have had to do three years ago, you are creating the blog post, right? You're creating the YouTube video, and then you're creating three or four more videos that are short videos from this three minute video. This, this, this stuff is really life changing. Um, I cannot thank you enough for, for coming back and like breaking these tools down even more. Like this, this really is a game changer for a lot of us. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Um, I always feel like you are only as good as how you, you know, impacted somebody else. So I'm, I'm extremely happy that I was able to kind of come and make it right because those tech issues in August were horrific. 